Thank you very much. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, well, well, first of all, to say that I, I mean, I feel a little as, a, as an alien as coming from the big, big, big institution to talk to you. But um, I mean, on the other hand, I, I, I do not work anymore uh, as a member of the institution. I mean, this, this center of studies uh, uh, thing is a kind of external uh, structure, as I will come. I'll stick to the papers because uh, I tend to expand myself too much, so it's, it probably is better to, to read it. Uh, so my apologies again for that. Um, oops. In 1964, when minimalism was taking its first steps and Jean Tingeli was showing his self-destructive machines around the world, Jean-Luc Godard made the characters of Van Apart run through the endless galleries of the Louvre in nine minutes, closing down the old time of museums, theatrical, empty, and baroque, and opening a new time, the time of contemporary experience, which required new narratives, new architectures, and new subject dispositions yet to be defined. Such a prophecy was not to be fulfilled, at least as Godard imagined, as we considered the historical drift after 68 and the subsequent postmodern turn. The so-called end of history not only implied the impossibility of projecting ourselves towards the future, as Godard's characters wished, but also a tendency to mimic and to remediate old-fashioned models and to make the pastiche the dominant form to deal with the past. In this context, museums flourished as providers of this commodified version of history and art. The statement of the museum designer and artist, Remy Zog, in 1983, regarding the obligation of museums to be the guardians of the autonomous condition of artistic experience should be understood as part of this regressive and narcissistic turn, especially if we consider the context of the market ideology which dominated the art world and its institutions at this period. Despite the different waves of new and critical museologies and the, and the current cre uh, credit of interactive and participatory models, anachronism is a consubstantial feature of contemporary museum experience. The museum, even that of contemporary art, is generally recognized by people as an archaic dispositive, a relic in itself, even if such archaism may increase its appeal as a quality uh, as a touristic product, product, as well as its authority and power. The contemporary ritual of museum visit mimics, to a great extent, the bourgeois public sphere as a pastiche, spectacularized, spec sorry, spectacularized and ready for its consumption, bearing the ideological mission of presenting it as the apex of the civilization process once devoid of its emancipation promises. There is a possibility to use such anachronisms in order to reveal the dystopic condition of the present. In Une Visite au Louvre, released in 2004, Estropi and Juliette uh, recovered the slow tempo of aesthetic vision that their colleague Godard had discarded 40 years earlier. They did it, however, by invoking an expert, uh, enacting uh, with their camera the analytic gaze of the young Paul Cézanne beholding the paintings of the great masters displaced in the Louvre at the threshold of the avant-garde. They seem to say that the terms of contemporary vision are incommensurable with those of the museum and that only by means of a temporary decalage we may rebind the eyes and the bodies of visitors with the patterns of attention and the rhythms required by the sequence of frame images. To see the paintings of Veronese, Ingres, Ange, and Delacroix as they are displayed in the Louvre, we should become aware of a psychic position alien to our own contemporary experience. The absorbed and analytic gaze solicited by the museum should be referred to through fictions, literary, cinematographic, and theatrical mediations. The scope of these fictions would, be, would not need to be the ideological indoctrination of visitors, nor the production of exciting simulacra, nor the provision of adequate settings for the rituals of the new elite. Rather, the anachronistic and theatrical dispositive of museum displays may have also the power to incite in passers-by an exceptional degree of Brechtian consciousness of their own gaze, making visible the shades casted by their own physical, biographical, 
and political bodies upon any persona that may be asked to incarnate. In a strobe Juliet film, an invisible feminine voice recites the impressions of Cezanne over the images of the paintings, preventing us uh, from identifying with the eye of the artist. The contrast between the slow pace of Cezanne's gaze with the intense traffic of central Paris portrayed in the first images of the film make evident the vacant space of the contemporary public. Pointing out that vacant space and the need to perform a position upon time, past, present, and future was particularly urgent in the case of Reina Sofia Museum when we took the duty in 2008. On the one hand, its peripheral situation within the hegemonic narratives of modernity had resulted in a provincial and colonial image of our collections, according to, to which any local artistic process appeared as an imperfect vision or version sorry, of movements emerged elsewhere. The biographical approach to our diasporic artists, Joan Miró, uh, Pablo Picasso, and Salvador Dalí, only reinforced the subaltern temporality defined either by the anxiety of lack or by the no nostalgia of loss. On the other hand, the museum was haunted by the ghosts of a recent past seized by decades of dictatorship and constrained by the subsequent institution, institutionalization of the avant-garde during the democratic transition, bringing about a normative and canonical narrative. The only instance in which history, in which history and the autonomous development of avant-garde art crossed their steps was Guernica, placed, uh, placed as a totem in the center of the museum, absorbing and, absorbing and solving all traumas and conflicts. We were lucky enough to start our work at the museum the year of the subprime mortgage crisis. Our first series of lectures had the causes and consequences of the financial crisis as its main theme. The art of, of the crisis, as it was the name of the, the, the lecture series, was our first collaboration with the Uni Universidad Nomada, the Nomada University a new left cultural association which was born around 2001 from a group of young activists and intellectuals that both uh, Graunik and, 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 uh, and, the, and, and the Viennese group knew well. Uh, so it, it, was, it were people that had been working already uh, with Magva, uh, such as uh, David Harvey, Mike Davis, Emmanuel Wallerstein, Andrea Fumagalli, Maurizio Lazzarato, uh, who were all in Rana Sofia in 2008 and 2009 discussing, discussing about crisis. Today, in 2015, crisis is not a theme uh, nor a position, but, uh, as the, but is the world we live in. Today, Spain has 26% uh, 20, of unemployment, uh, a rate more than that uh, is twice as much among uh, the young population, around uh, 60%. But in Spain, this is not just a financial crisis or just part of the crisis of the global system. It is a crisis that affects the political model and the ideological regime under which we have lived. The fact that the king had to apologize, the former king, had to apologize for having been hunting in Botswana elephants is just a humorous symptom of this situation. Ours is the crisis of what has been called recently uh, the uh, cultural of transition. By cultural of transition, we, referred, we refer first to the ideology and political system deriving from the Spanish transition to the democracy after Franco's death in 1975, a culture of consensus and social peace on the basis of consumer capitalism which smoothly transferred sovereign power from the structures of the dictatorship to those of the par parliamentary monarchy, with, with hardly any democratic process or public debate. Second, we referred more precisely to the role given to culture in this cultural transition, and more particularly to contemporary culture and art in this new regime. New Spain was to be presented abroad as a country of culture, the destination of cultural tourism as if the civil war and the 40 years of dictatorship had never happened. Historical cities, monuments, museums, fiesta and good tapas 
completed the touristic offer of sun and beach, uh, uh, identifying Spain as culture. Indoors, culture worked as well as a suitable way to represent the complexities and contradictions of our society. Local traditions, on the one hand, and creativity, innovation, and modernity in art and design, on the other, uh, projected from above and from political institutions, were the landmarks of our, our, modern, our identity as a modern society. The state became the main purveyor of culture, monopolizing cultural authority and legitimacy, as well as the spaces of culture through the construction of a number of museums and art centers that cover the whole country. This cultural despotism made of art and culture a ground for institutional propaganda. And paradoxically, this so apparently social democrat pro protection of culture conveyed the values of an ideals of progress, growth, and modernization according to the terms of market, market neoliberal ideologies. This situation, uh, which was in crisis in, in 2008, made urgent for the new team of the museum the recovery of an, uh, of an ik et nunc, and here and now, from which to project a recognizable, recognizable point of view, shaking off the histori historiographical inertias, breaking the silence, and bringing light to that angle. It was essential to start with to provide the visitor with the possibility to face and recognize the contingencies of our uncertain times, the times of crisis. This involved the risk of taking a position on the stage, rehearsing a new voice in a play, always unfinished, and, fin and facing an audience, the expectations of whom we still, unknow, uh, we, we still don't know. The notion of Museos del Sur, of Southern Museums, as proposed by Rena Sofia Museum, linked the consideration of these dilemmas to a radical rereading of global modernity, in which the imperial eye of the museum had as a necessary counterpart the gazes of the subaltern, always fragmentary, contingent, performative, and resilient. The methodological and political implications of this southern model had been already rehearsed in a previous project called Desacuerdos, Disagreements, which started in 2002, constrained to the Spanish context. Taking Rancière's reference as a point of departure, Desacuerdos brought together cultural institutions, activists, artists, and researchers within an experimental project, multiple and dysphonic, which intended to set up the narratives against the grain of the official history of the Spanish democratic transition. Desacuerdos explored the possibility of locating a counter-hegemonic counter voice within the institution through a process of conflict and negotiation, as well as the form of, of historization rel related to the dissonant uh, nature of the project. The, activists, uh, the activist artist and theorist Marcelo Exposito proposed an epistemological breakup with canonical histories by politically rebinding the dispersed fragments of the past and the present in a diagrammatic and performative action of storytelling. I quote, which may allow us to understand the way artistic artifacts bear the traces of their specific historical condition. The notions of montage and changeable eye taken from film theory were easily transferable to the notions of missing a scene and theatricality used by the museum in their exhibition uh, uh, proposals. This is uh, the diagram that uh, Marcelo Esposito uh, produced for Desacuerdos as a way to relate past and present uh, in uh, a non-canonical way. And con the first curatorial movement was to break the hegemony of the, extra, the abstract present imposed by the museum, triggering a dense ta time awareness which encouraged visitors to locate themselves in their here and now in order to deal with a range of multiple and diverse chronologies. The time of looking, the parallactic distance with regard to the different strata of the past, the specific time and space of the artworks, the sequences, the before, the then, the after. The museum should become a heterochronic space where the polarity between a blind now and a reified past should be broken in many pieces, suggesting many possible times contradictory and overlapping and activating the frictions attached to the politics of memory. Finally, the voice of the museum should be mod modulated in order to reveal its contingent and unlocated nature, thus suspending the fiction of an autonomous artistic truth only waiting to be institutionally displayed. 
it had to appear as part of a, of a com communicative action which linked narrator and recipient within a process of meaning production. This voice should not be identified with that of the author understood as a singular voice which would replace one figure of authority, the abstract canon of art history, with that of an exceptional individual. The goal would be to incarnate the voice of a narrator who speaks from a collective and plural us that seeks the complicity of listeners, creating the conditions for them to speak up. But who is this us? It cannot be named in terms of identity. It is not the nation, but is neither the humankind. It congregates, around the story, it, it congregates around the storytelling, becoming a community of listeners or viewers which feel their commonality when being addressed in a specific time and a specific space. But even if we chose not to speak to the affluent world class, not to an undifferentiated mass of tourists, it is true that we are still addressing a subject defined in terms of lack, a disempowered subject imagined in relation to or in contrast with the luminous subject defined by the Enlightenment. It is the subject inflicted by the alienating conditions and struggles of late capitalism who, with the aid of the museum, would become aware of the ideological nature of the system we live in, starting with the art world and the museum itself. To an extent, we see that our task as a museum today is to provide critical tools to understand a system which we may not have the capacity to change. But would we, and that's the question, but would we be ready to deal with a new kind of subject, not defined in terms of deprivation, but, not, but one defined by expectations and desires which go beyond the apparent immanence of current capitalist society? One that is already experimenting, as we think, other forms of organization and producing other imaginaries. What if the South, I mean, these museums of the South, started making sense of the world beyond and without our mediations? Could the museum still be a suitable scenario for a performance of this new subjectivity? Or rather, could the museum be at least a transitional space to experiment with that new condition? We would be probably t uh, talking of a radically different sort of perf performativity. As we, as we said above, the rituals of the modern museum identified the subject of the public sphere with individuals who walked and looked around, surrounded by other anonymous and autonomous bodies and looks like ours, without the need to have any business, any competition, or any conflict with each other in the rooms of the museum. Our favorite artists in the museum, who like this, people like Pistoletto or Rodaes or Godard, questioned this disposition of bodies and spaces defined by, capi by, by the capitalist dis disciplinary society already back in the 60s. But to raise awareness of the alienating nature of such disposition was not supposed to be enough not even then, but in the decades of high neoliberalism, there had been very, very few occasions on which to leave the trench and to go outside, uh, I mean, and to go outside. Because, did it, I mean, this going outside of the museum, going, out, uh, going outside of, the, of this narrative uh, didn't seem feasible since the outside was monopolized by no places and junk spaces. We all know museums who did and became very much like airports or shopping malls. But the ground has been drastically, at least in Spain, uh, been modified lately by the puissance of, a new, of new articulations of minds, bodies, and affections with hegemony claims. In the Arab Springs, the Spanish Indignados, and the different forms of the Occupy movement, people do not see themselves anymore as protesters or anti-systemic but as a central political subject. Our critical invocation of the specters of the modern public sphere needs to be negotiated now with a political body, with a real political body, which is still in progress, but demands to be recognized and to take its part in the play. It is not enough anymore for them to occupy precariously and provisionally the spaces and structures that they considered to be obsolete. They are already imagining new forms of institutional organization and devising strategies to take the power. According to Tony Negri's intervention in the new Rape of Europe uh, one year ago, a new constitu uh, that, that was a conference that uh, I will come back uh, at the end of my talk. 
One year ago, a new constituent process may be starting, full of uncertainties and ambivalences. The most repeated claim of the Spanish indignados was que no nos representan, we are not represented. Is not only denouncing the crisis of existing, of existing institutions, but proclaiming the upcoming of a new political subject and different forms of mediation. This situation is affecting the very basis of the museum, since these subjects do not have any desire to be the consumers of our cultural products or the users of our services, as defined either by marketing strategies or by sophisticated specialists. As opposed, as, a, as opposed to the bourgeois individual and its surrogates, these new subjects come to the museum only as long as they are recognized uh, and a certain degree of affinity with their principles and goals, and as long as they can engage in a process of negotiation. On the other hand, museums, heirs of the Enlightenment and the, com and the compromises of the bourgeois revolutions of the 19th century, should be ready to debate the other forms of these other forms of organization, I, sorry. Oops, sorry. Sorry for that. Just to save, uh, to save, to save paper, I, I, I copied in the, in the two things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so we should have a, a, the institutional basis and provide the conditions for a negotiation and a scenario in which the persona for the new play can rehearse their voices. At this crossroad, two basic principles should lead the position of the museum. First, that the museum's survival is not a goal by its own sake. Using marketing strategies may, uh, by using marketing strategies, we may not survive, uh, survive as we are. We may grow and expand without any institutional basis, becoming what is being called a zombie institution, an institution devoid of any ethical or social ground the only function of which is to grow in power and to become the instrument of the power upon which its survival and growth depends. The second principle is the recognition that institutions cannot tra be transformed and transformed by themselves and the sheer exercise of their own criticality. Leaving aside all our institutional arrogance, the redefinition of the institution involves the strategic suspension of our, old cult of, of our cultural authority, so far exclusive and the recognition of the cultural and political leg leg legitimacy of others. This is, a strategic, uh, this is a strategic decision which necessarily involves the development of new protocols and new rules of the game, based on new ethics which should emerge from the political debate. So far, all cultural resources have been administered and managed according to the rules of the state administration, following highly bureaucratic methods and according to a strictly hierarchical structure. But who are these new subjects which, uh, with which to negotiate the future of the museum and, it is, and, uh, and institutional basis. We could say that they are increasingly numerous and, they, and that we should avoid the temptation to provide a cartography of them, as institutionalized uh, power tend to. Let's name only the two, well, the best known or the, the, the one we were, we've been working uh, with uh, more systematically, the uh, called Fundación de los Comunes. Even the other groups, like the Reconcetualismo del Sur, Peninsula, or Somateca, uh, that uh, are, are uh, increasingly uh, expanding their set of, uh, of demands uh, with regard to the museum. Okay, the Fundación de los Comunes is a federation of activist movements which link uh, their antagonist tradition with a distinct uh, instituent logic, uh, and somehow perform institutional articulations of a new kind. They, they call themselves monstrous, insti monstrous institutions, uh, which decide to strategically interact with traditional ones in a period in which these public institutions, like ours, are under attack by the neoliberal demolition of the welfare state. This collaboration uh, did not come as a surprise in 2008, as we started uh, organizing with them this uh, series of conferences. But it was a result of a series of previous experiences tracing back to 2001 and 2002 when Magba released an exhibition called Activism as One of the Boss Arts. This is a long story of tensions and misunderstandings which continued with their participation in the research projects I mentioned uh, before, uh, Desacuerdos. And in short, by 2008, these movements and the museum uh, had already a troubled affair. But the world and, uh, and Spain had changed dramatically uh, since 2001. 
Social movements temporarily absent during the years of uh, Zapatero's honeymoon were back in 2008, were more numerous and uh, were using languages and methods which seem to respond and correspond to reality better than those used a few years earlier by my generation. Even if there was no root page to follow, we both seemed to know how to proceed in 2008. What it was just a series of lectures organized by Nomada University I mentioned above became a network project with social movements all over Spain taking Nomadas as a link. La Casa Invisible became a central uh, battlefield, a beautiful 19th century building in downtown Malaga, property of the city council, who, which had been occupied by an heterogeneous group of activists, squatters, architects, students, artists, educators, as a protest and a reaction against the cultural policies in the city. Malaga has three contemporary art museums devoted to tourism, the Picasso Museum, the Tita Thyssen Museum, and, the, uh, and recently the, 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 the Contemporary Art Museum. And two more uh, museums are coming, a branch of L'Hermitage, following the arrival of new rich Russians to the Costa del Sol, and a branch of the Pompidou. So there will be five. Reina Sofia mediated in order to obtain from the city council the commitment to the miss the use of the building to the activists if they managed to create a cultural foundation in one year time. As an update of the situation, this Christmas, the city council actually decided to close temporarily La Casa Invisible due to apparently safety reasons. And new conversations between Reina Sofia and the mayor of Malaga have started even if we are aware that the current political situation and the coming local elections have polarized the positions. The third year, in 2011, we focused on a general discussion about what it meant for these monstrous institutions to become something like a proper institution, a foundation. Obviously, a foundation is not an adequate uh, institutional form for these instituent practices. The decision was taken that instead of creating the Casa Invisible Foundation, a more general Fundación de los Comunes should come forth. We met in Madrid, Malaga, and again in Madrid to discuss the nature of this foundation, which would cover a more open federation of social movements. But we were already in 2011, and on, and on the 5th of May, the situation changed dramatically, and hundreds of thousands of people were in the streets with the same claims of the Fundación de los Comunes we only realized that we were just part of a new wave of social action. The horizon expanded unexpectedly and responsibility as well. Most of the participants of the Fundación were working in assemblies, writing manifestos, and launching political platforms as Guanyem, Let's Win, in Barcelona, and Podemos, all over the Spanish state. We have a real, real claims to represent the new majorities, what they call the 99%. However, the space of for negotiation has shrunk dramatically on our side, in the, on the side of the museum, since the museum had to intensify the negotiations with the other side. That is, the negotiations with a new right-wing government with a radically different notion of cultural value, a mixture of grand tradition and cultural industries. And on the other side, with financial powers, since budget cuts and the neoliberal view of the cultural institution required an increase in dependency on the economic elite, that is, on the 1% and their specific agendas. As the social movements were occupying the center of the political arena, paradoxically, we were increasingly closeted. Different strategies should be devised, uh, although our relative power positions have radically changed. Who is the big guy now? Today, we are developing together with the Fundación de los Comunes and the Red Conceptualismos del Sur, because in the process they somehow got together, a dispositive which may preserve the grounds for the institutional debate in this very precarious context, deferring the possibility of an actual transformation of the real institution till the moment when there are suitable political situations. Situation. This dispositive, this new dispositive that we are now creating is called Laboratory of Social Imagination. It's not within the institution, but it's a kind of new dispositive external to it that intends to create a space in which the dual negotiation, negotiation institution, non-institution, is replaced with an open conversation with multiple agents, 
which correspond to the structure of the new public sphere taking shape in Spain, as well as with inter international institutional networks in which both the Fundación and the Reina Sofía are involved with. It's interesting that uh, uh, in this precarious moment in which uh, uh, we are sort of losing space for a direct negotiation with the Fundación de los Comunes, what we are doing is to create this space that, that is opening uh, the conversation to many others, to many other uh, agents uh, out of the out of the Fundación and also uh, to the, our international network. Especially in this case, uh, we rehearsed uh, an experiment uh, uh, that is the conference called the New Rape of Europe that we co-organized with the, with the Fundación de los Comunes, in, but uh, invoking and convoking uh, many other agents from both Spain and out of Spain, and we did it under the umbrella of uh, a network of institutions called La Internazionale, that is a network of uh, uh, museums, of contemporary museums uh, coming from different parts of Europe. So somehow it was a strategy of uh, uh, eliminating, uh, the, from, I mean, or displacing from the center uh, the negotiation between the Reina Sofía and, uh, and the museum, the, and, and the Fundación. Precarity and contingency, which is the sign of cultural action today, especially in Spain, has made positions mobile and the future unpredictable, even for big institutions like Reina Sofia, calling for a new intelligence, new sorts of practices, and a new kind of, a new kind of politics. We should not pursue either the recovery of lo lost certainties or mere survival, but the transformation of the cultural field as part of a more general transformation of society. Alliances among heterogeneous agents common fronts, and an honest relationship with the social sphere. I mean, as a result, and uh, uh, somehow, uh, the, as a result of this process of precariousness and contingency, um, I decided to resign or to, to leave the museum because uh, my mission when I was starting uh, in 2008 was to uh, start a transformation of the institution from within uh, through the negotiation with these uh, agents. Mm, at this moment, probably in this uh, provisional, temporary, contingent moment, uh, this, uh, this possibility is, uh, is uh, blocked. And uh, it's, um, it's, uh, we have to invent, and that's uh, why I displace from within the department to this center of studies that is a kind of uh, experimental dispositive that uh, has somehow the, the possibility, the visibility, and the flexibility to negotiate uh, with others in a, in a more relaxed way. But uh, uh, somehow uh, the, the dilemma of, of, the, of the institution is, is very much open in, since, uh, since uh, um, the museum has, a, 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 has a, as a, um, as the only possibility to, to, to recover or to, to claim legitimacy a uh, reconstruction of the of the social contract uh, and, and has to be done together with uh, with those that are claiming uh, for uh, a new political uh, position. I think that's very much uh, open to debate. I, I assume that the the situation in in Britain is is, is very different in in the sense that uh, the debates or the candidates that you have in the in the in the cultural field uh, do not relate uh, directly to the way the political debate. Uh, the situation in Spain is uh, privileged in that sense because what we are discussing in the cultural field and what we are discussing out of the cultural field is uh, very much integrated. I mean, the, the need of re refunding or re or re refunding the, the, the institution is uh, not only something that we need from within, but it's on, that is a, a real demand uh, from, from society, and that's something we have to face. Thank you very much.